politics because now he's in a government which allows him to be a dictator and he has issued an executive order that's going to limit and restrict the kind of things that can be said by Twitter, the company who runs Twitter, to correct the lies that he tells. If he had not been voted into office, he'd be that poor guy on his television program. We do need to register. I've been in politics more years than some people have been on this earth. I'm 82 years old now, by the way. I've been in office 46 years in the legislature and four more years on the learning community. That's 50 years. I know where the levers of power are. The first thing politicians look at is how many people in a given group have registered. Then if a sizable number have registered, they look at how many have voted. All that a politician is concerned about is the vote. We could have meetings like this every day. I speak on the floor every day. Say things that no politician has said. There are more articles written about me, which you all don't know about, in the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, all of these foreign media, because politicians don't do what I do. You all are used to me, but wait till I'm not there. I don't want that to happen. But I am the only politician in this country where they changed the Constitution to get him out of office. That has happened no place. Now, when they fear a man enough to change their Constitution and restrict everybody who will be in that office to get rid of him, then it shows you what they fear. Had this community not voted for me, I couldn't have been in the legislature. Had I not been in the legislature, I couldn't have gotten a bill that called for district elections of city council, and that's how black people got on the city council. I got a bill to require election by district on the county board, and black people got on the county board. The same thing with the school board, and that's how black people got on the school board. My bills were vetoed, and I was down there fighting them alone. And I told them, you all are my white folks. I own this legislature, and you do what I will allow you to do, and it's not because it's not, it's not because I'm going to grab you by the throat or punch you. I'm going to learn your rules and beat you at your own game, and I am pleased. I am a legend, and I'm, it's a poor card that won't do this on the horn. But I know there are some people from the police department here, and I don't believe in talking behind people's backs. I'm like little David. I go into the bear's den, I will beard the lion in his own cave, and I'll go where the chief, the governor, or anybody else is, and make it clear what my view is. I do it on the floor of the legislature practically every day. You all don't watch it, so you don't know. The media will not report it because they are of, by, and for white people. It's been said from other states, if there were a white senator doing what you are doing anywhere, he'd be a national figure. You think I don't know that? I have a degree in history from Creighton. I have a law degree from Creighton Law School. The only thing they hate more than my having graduated from their schools is that I tell people that I did. <laughs> there are many things that I could do and make money. I've been offered jobs by lost firms even though I won't take the bar or join the bar association because they want me to do research. They want me to write briefs. They want me to read briefs and correct their briefs and I could give you cases that I have won in court that you don't know about, that other people could not win, that had not win until I did it. You know why I'm using this word I now? It's for the media, not you all. I want them to know that I see through them. Yeah. Now, reporters can try to take the best statements possible. They can try to put the best story together that they can. But there's a white person at that studio who determines what's going to go on the air. And if they want to make it look like I've had a part to play in this issue, because it's known, they will let my face be there. They will let my mouth be there moving. But a white person is giving the words and supposedly relaying what I said. 
Now, the only reason I took this mic is because there are people who know that I'm here today. I would not let the opportunity go by without speaking because people might take that to mean that I'm opposed to what is being done here, that I think it's unimportant. I think it is extremely important whenever we come together and address the issues confronting us. I don't care what that issue is if it confronts us. Not all of us are going to say the same thing. It would be pathetic if we did. We do not all have the same point of view. We are a product of our upbringing, our experiences, our education, the things that have taken us down the path that we have walked. But here's where we would be to blame if we don't speak when we ought to speak. If you go across there and look up at that big billboard, you'll see a message from me. And it's bad as I think the police are. It talks about this virus that is killing us daily. So many more black people, brown people, and poor people who are neither black nor brown, but in poor communities who are dying. It makes headlines in Time Magazine, The Atlantic Monthly, The New York Times, all of the media. We cannot go to sleep on this. We need to wear the mask. You are not wearing that because it's going to stop you from getting the virus. It's going to stop you from giving it to somebody. When I first started wearing this thing, I had a little message that said, my brothers and my sisters keep her. That's why we do it. Don't let people mock you and make you think that this virus is a hoax. If you listen to public radio, turn it on at six o'clock and listen to the terrible problems that the morticians, the ones who perform autopsies, the grave diggers had trying to handle more bodies than they have ever seen in their life up to this time. It is not a joke. It is not a conspiracy. It is a virus that is killing people. And if you don't believe it, then when you get it, you're going to run to the hills. You're going to run to the rocks to hide your face. And one of the rocks cry out, no hiding place down here. I applaud this young man. I don't know how old he is, but everybody's young compared to me. <laughs> so go ahead with limited resources. No extensive amount of preparatory opportunity to put something like this together. Numbers do not determine the value of what is done. Had he not put forth that effort, we would not be here. I certainly wouldn't be because I still go to Lincoln every day. When I took that affirmation, other people swear I don't. I told them, promising me heaven is not enough to make me do something. Threatening me with hell doesn't mean anything to me. But when I give you my word, I've given you the best that I can give you. And that binds me. And that's why all of these years, I've always done what I believe in if I'm the only one doing it. When I was attacked by all those officials and all of the police, this community didn't speak out for me. Not one person came to my assistance. Not one said that the police, in fact, do terrify us in our community. We wouldn't know an ISIS if we saw one, but we know what the police are. And we know that slogan, protect and serve, is untrue. Do you think I faulted the community for not coming down there? I did not expect, as I've told you earlier, people to come all the way to Lincoln. And you know why they sent me down there? I don't need an army because that's what I am. This last statement, when I go traveling and I tell people that Nebraska is the only one house legislature in the country, and at that time I was the only black person, people would say, wow, you're the only black guy there. I say, yeah. They say, that's not a fair fight, is it? I said, no, they need more help. <laughs>
And you know why I say it now in the open? Let the senators be told what I said, and they'll tell you, he's telling the truth. He's got a legislative record to prove it. I don't take blow to anybody. I don't run from anybody. I don't hide from anybody. Not the chief, not armed, uniformed cops, not the detectives, not the spies, not the snitches, not any of them. That's right. When you see me, you see what a man is. When you watch and read my record, read it. Don't take my word for it. You'll see what a man does. This community is in my blood. My blood is in this community. You don't think I could have moved way out of West Omaha. There were people who offered me houses. I don't want five digits in my address. I live maybe a mile and a half from where I was born. I've always lived in, in this community by choice. I make $12,000 a year before taxes. You think that's all that I could make? If I would tell the governor, if I would tell the mayor, boss, mistress, I'll do what you tell me to do. And of course, Susie Buffett, I'd be a millionaire. This community is becoming Susie Buffett's playground, her plantation. She has purchased black men who she considers to be her slaves. It has gotten so bad. Even the World Herald wrote an editorial about all the millions of dollars that Susie Buffett has spent buying a property in you all's community. When it's being built up, do you think black people own those buildings? Do you think black people own that property? If you think that this is a renaissance for black people, you go downtown and try to get a loan so you can buy some property. Susie has this land locked up. Do you know who her daddy has as a guard? A guy who used to be a cop, and they called him Dirty Red. When he was out here, he was brutal, cowardly, and vicious. And that's why Warren Buffett hired him. He started a security company. Tell Dirty Red what I said. But I said it when Dirty Red was a cop, and he and Big Head, his partner, never came to me. Never confronted me. They pick people they can cower down. And who wouldn't be cowered down if somebody put a gun on you? These cops would be cowardly. They are cowardly now. They're they are pack animals. Not all they of are predatory. Not all of and if a cop tries to do the right thing, we had some black officers who really tried hard. And things were done from inside the department to undercut them and to try to get rid of them. And it's always going to be that way. When you have a job to do, you've got to do it no matter what. And don't be distracted. Okay, he said his time is up. Well, see, that'll, that'll let them know. Don't invite me at the last minute Senator, as a token to draw other people. Senator, let me ask you a question, please. Oh, Senator, Senator, Senator. I would like to. I would like to thank each and every one of you all for being out here. And let us now refocus on the point of issue that we came out here for, and that is George Floyd and his I used to work at Fox 42 and uh, in media, and one of the lessons they tell you is to never turn over the mic. So I have to, I have to, rely on that maybe next time but we all learn as we move forward we're all here to try to do what we feel is right we're all speaking some of the messages that we would like for our people to hear so at this time we will bring this meeting to a close i ask that each and every one of you remember george floyd and what just occurred to him this tuesday that is the purpose of us being here. At this time, we close. Thank you. Thank you.